fill up your coffee cup all week long. Thank you, Jack. Forex Analytics t-shirts, Forex Analytics coffee cup. I'm now part of the gangster crew. How's everyone doing today? And Dale, you look stylish today. <laughs> I like it. I'm an, F, I'm an FA guy. And, you know, I did this to remind everyone, Blake, about the giveaway. You no, too could you too, you too could look cool that's if awesome. you answer the giveaway. Huh? I like it. I like it. That's so cool you're a little, little bit under the weather. I am. I am. So I'm going to let you do your intro. I'm going to mute my microphone, but I'll. I'll uh, I'm going to. I'll give you guys some thoughts uh, today, even though I am under the weather. <laughs> Sounds like the allergies kicked into an upper respiratory. I'm not a doctor, but yeah, yeah. you were you, you you weren't feeling you weren't sleeping good because of the allergies. Uh, I hate those upper respiratories. That's all anyway, yeah. yeah. Hey, how are you, Luca? So anyway, uh, my opening is this. Um, I'm looking to sell dollar strength sometime this week. It's not today. I, I want to see a 130 pound. I want to see euro closer to a 110. Okay, I think that could happen, 980 to 10. FA has some. Uh, Nick has a harmonic up there. A uh, USD CAD should start declining here. You know, we diverged for a week. Blake said it was a good short at 36 and a half, 36. Maybe we get this pulled back to 34 during this phase of dollar weakness. And I really hope you took to heart what Blake and I talked about. I remember I was negative Kiwi early last week and said do not stay short, do not chase uh, weakness. And now we're getting a rally. I think we could rally to nine and a half in Kiwi. Uh, most likely it's going to be a great shorting opportunity. Of course, Aussie's acting better. Talked about covering here when we diverged. I thought we might get a three drive, but it held the previous low. So um, I, it's early for me to want to think about shorting the strength of the Aussie Kiwi. So not going to do it. And I think we're getting closer in the end. Uh, the end starting to not confirm up here, but I don't see anything really off the gun here, uh, Blake or uh, Steve. So uh, thinking uh, that it could be Tuesday or Wednesday. You know, we have the Fed. We have the Fed. I don't think they have a press conference, but the big number this week, of course, is uh, NFP on Friday. Yeah, you know, it's um well today first first and foremost is uh is a is a bank holiday for most of Europe. So it's right. been it's been relatively uh, um relatively quiet that you know the 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 fact that the government um secured um funding through the end of September uh you know boosted risk uh so we saw the dollar yen spike up into resistance. Um really still struggling with this 111.80 level, even though we, we, we pushed some stops right above those highs um, yeah. from last week, it's still, you know, for all intents and purposes, you know, holding, um, you know, that it allowed precious metals to pull back a little bit overnight because of, uh, because of that news, but they're still holding, you know, key supports as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, and, and it's been pretty quiet. I, I, I don't, there's not a, there's not a lot on my radar today. Um, as far as things to do, but what I, what I'll do is uh, let me let me just really quick uh, grab the, the grab the screen. Give me one second. Let's see here. And I am feeling under the weather, guys. So if you're you're wondering, um, you know, do I sound funny? I I do. I'm a little under the weather, and I'm traveling tomorrow, so I'll be uh, I'll be out of pocket tomorrow, which I'm just hoping that I clear up a little bit before I have to go. Uh, so this is, uh, here's the dollar yen. Let me just pull up the dollar yen really quick. And you can see, you know, dollar yen's really facing this big resistance. Uh, I mean, I've had this resistance zone drawn out for a while. And uh, you can see we just kind of pushed up towards the uh, brief new highs last night, you know, just stopped out a few people. And um, but we're, we're really holding, and 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 I'm, you know, I'm looking at equities, and equities are, are are bit up today, uh, a little bit, and 
you know, as, as far as U.S. equities go from the uh, from the announcement uh, about the uh, about the funding that the government had. But that was expected. I mean, it's you know, I, I don't think anybody really expected the government to shut down. So um, what we have seen as an overnight rally in risk might actually end up giving back some of those gains. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we slump right back towards 111 in the dollar yen. But I, I do have to point out that these uh, these yen pairs have been very, very aggressively bought as of late. And you can see the euro yen, we're right up against, you know, really key resistance here. Um, if, I, if I felt better today, and, and I typically right. don't trade when I'm not feeling well because I, I don't feel like I have my head in the game and um, smart. Yeah. It's, it's, it, you know, even when I was trading just myself and my, my own funds, it, it, I still, you know, when I wasn't feeling well, I, I just knew that I, I, I'm, I'm not at the top of my game. I'm like an athlete that's, you know, you know just, you know, I'm not, I'm not competing at the, at, at, at my best, you know, my best uh, level. So same thing with trading, you know, and, and, and so if, if I was feeling better, I'd probably be looking at the Euro yen, like, okay, maybe I'll just short it up here and, you know, keep my stops above that resistance. But um, I, I, I'm not going to do that. Not today, but that, that I think is an opportunity for some of you guys that are, are thinking that way. Uh, the pound yen has been extremely strong. You can see that, you know, RSI is starting to diverge or it has been diverging here for the last few days. Um, the pound yen might might pull back a little bit, and all these yen pairs. I mean, you know, the the Aussie yen's had a nice bounce. The, the even, I mean, even the beleaguered Kiwi yen has had a had a decent bounce. So, um, with some of these yen pairs bouncing, uh, you might be able to sell into the strength um, if 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 you know the stock market does pull back a little bit you know, at the open. Um, but it is going to be relatively quiet. It's we have a huge week though. Um, as far as data goes, you know, we have, well, well, tonight we have like the RBA decision. Um, so if you're trading anything that's Aussie related, you got to keep that in mind. I don't have any Aussie exposure on right now. I took my Aussie New Zealand off. Um, you know, it's been a, it's been a nice move, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous about, you know, tonight with the RBA. You know, inflation has been picking up in, in Australia and that's one thing that the RBA may note. And if they do, that could really boost the Aussie dollar um, higher. And and that's what I'm watching for. Hopefully I'll feel a little bit better this evening uh, when the RBA does meet later on tonight. But, you know, we have, um, and, and since, you know, you're looking at the Aussie New Zealand right now, we also have New Zealand employment tomorrow. And we also have um, uh, dairy auction results. So, this the the Aussie New Zealand, for example, you know it could go aggressively higher if we have a hawkish RBA and a weak New Zealand employment, or it could it could go completely the other direction if we have a you know if a, we have a um, uh, uh, an RBA that's that's a little dovish and, and maybe a strong dairy auction result and a strong employment number out of New Zealand. So, you know you have to be a little careful with with the Aussie and the Kiwi pairs for the next couple of days. But we do have, um, we have the FOMC on Wednesday. We also have, uh, we have jobs report, uh, the, the jobs report actually on, um, on Friday. So, you know, a lot of things are happening. Um, you know, a lot of things are happening this week that, that are, are, uh, could, could potentially influence the market. So it's going to be a, pretty big week in the uh, in the currency market uh, today might be a little slow but after today should be pretty busy I would think um, what one of the other things that I wanted to point out and if you're uh, if you're a Forex analytics subscriber you've seen this we have a pennant uh, in the pound dollar and the pounds holding up and uh, we're 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 on our way you know towards the uh, well we have this 130 level, which is just a, a round number, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of stops above there if we get up there. Um, we have uh, we have 132, which would be the target of this um, of this pennant if it does play out. So that's you know something to pay pretty close attention to as far as the, the cable. I think the cable is acting really really well. We do have a ton of UK PMIs 
this week dale so um yeah there's there's a uh, and and you know construction pmi we have services pmi we have um uh, I think we have oh we have yeah construction PMI manufacturing PMI tomorrow so so we have a lot of PMIs coming out of out of the UK and I think most people are expecting weak PMI data you know as Brexit is is getting closer and the last month's PMI data came in a little bit below expectation so if we get Wasn't an there some kind of downgrade? I saw you comment possibly on Twitter. Was it an S and P downgrade of UK debt or something like that? No, they they reiterated it at negative. I think okay. they reaffirm reaffirmed at negative. I see. You know, which okay. which and then the pound continued to scream scream higher. That's because the market's still pretty aggressively short the cable. You know, yeah. so any type of good news. Um, you know, any type of good news whatsoever is going to boost the cable. And that's why I think you have to watch the data because last month's PMI data was so weak that, um, you, you know, if, if, if we come out with a little bit of an upside surprise, that could really squeeze the, the pound even higher. Uh, one of the other things, and just, you know, keeping in, in line with the pound here, if you notice this... Uh, blue dotted trend line here yeah comes through comes through the lower it was like right. the lower 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 trend line yeah it's like a return it, it was a return line that it took out and now it's yeah. back above it huh yeah we're back we're, 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 we're trying and we're slightly above it now so that's something that I think you know we we have to pay pretty close attention to at this uh, at this stage in the, at this that's stage exactly what crew did last year you know, you had a falling wedge. In fact, it was during an interview with you at FX Street we talked about that. And then I think Chris Baird talked to you about it as well. And we kind of had a little flip where, um, you know, I think you were negative, <clears throat> but uh, pointed out it was a wedge and you were converted, um, which uh, I it was a compliment to me. I think he even tweeted out, you know, thank you, Dale and Chris for, you know, working with me on crew, but it's the same type of situation. You get throw unders, and then uh, the formation becomes alive again, and it's really it's a bullish formation. Yeah, yeah, and 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 it really, you know, it, it really can be. And and when you throw over like that, um, and and I think the the, the pound is uh, is is showing signs of life down here. So you're very you're very right. Um, one other one other thing that I, I I failed to point out in the week ahead video from from this weekend is I failed to point out the dollar Canadian. This thing is extremely bullish while it's above 136. You know, while we trade above 136 or 135.70 somewhere around here, yeah. it's bullish. And and um, the dollar may look weak against other currencies. But I'll tell you what, it, it looks really good against the Canadian, and I'm not, I don't have any, I don't have any Canadian exposure right now, you know, but yeah. I'll tell you, if the, if we can dip down here to like one, you know, sub 136, maybe, you know, trap some people on the short side, or maybe, uh, you know, just dip down there and, 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 and stop some, you know, late longs. I don't think what you know being long below 136 you know slow, just a little bit below 136 is a bad idea uh, if if that can be the case and this is really you know one of the one of the currency pairs that the dollar is actually showing a breakout I mean the dollar looks pretty strong against the Kiwi and the Aussie maybe not today because they're they're both higher today but overall um, you know the dollar looks strong against some of these commodity currencies however mm -hmm. The, the dollar is actually breaking out against the Canadian. So that I think really has to, you have to pay attention to it. And if, if you're not, you know, if you're not uh, selling, you know, the Canadian through the dollar, meaning buying the dollar Canadian, you could also be looking at the pound Canadian, Euro Canadian, you know, other, other crosses like that, you know, might, Remember might be, might be Remember I asked Adam Button, I said, you know, there are two camps, 120, 150 in Canada, and he went with the 150 camp. 
Yeah, and I, down and I, around one thirty-two or so uh, when I estimate. Yeah, it's and and I you know I wholeheartedly agree, and it's still looking pretty good. Excuse me, really quick. <clears throat> All right, Dale, I'm uh, go ahead, I'm buddy. Probably at the end of my rope here. Um, okay, buddy. I'm just not feeling very well, guys, and I'm I'm sorry that I I just can't. I'm just not feeling all that great go take um, a new. yeah unfortunately I've got a I've got a few things I got to do around here this morning before I can but okay, I, I want to wish you guys a great trading session and a great day and um, and 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 have a great uh, interview uh, uh, today I know I know you got a good one uh, set up yeah and there, Nanette Kirkez at Tarantula yeah Nanette you know what it, what I uh, it's funny I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of Nanette but he looks almost exactly like a clone of Vin Diesel. I, 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 I tease him about it. He looks a lot like Vin Diesel. So, you know, it's like, don't tell me Vin Diesel doesn't trade FX when you look at the NAD. Anyone agree with me that's seen the NAD before? Does he look like Vin Diesel to you? What do you think, Rob? Okay. Well, feel better, Blake, and uh, have a safe trip. All right, man. Connecticut. And uh, we will carry on without you and uh, uh, hoping that God's speed you feel better in 24 or 36 hours, bro. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Get better, uh, give, get better Blake. Thank, See, thanks, Steve. Bit. Yeah, Steve, you know, S Steve was crying today because you, you had a cold. He's very sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you, Steve, buddy? What, mate? Sorry? What, were you crying because you felt so bad that Blake had a cold today? Ah, uh, you, you know how it is. I mean, yeah, uh, he, I mean, you know, whenever he, yeah, you know, he any, went. yeah, anytime your significant other is under the weather, you know, I know you and Blake have a bromance going, so I know how yeah, you feel. Yeah, more or less, you know how it is. We we said a lot of common things, you know, kids <laughs> and everything else, and working a lot. <laughs> So, so I, uh, I totally understand when he's under the weather. You know, I've been there. He has covered for me and vice versa. Yeah. You know how it is. That's a team. So uh, I'm sure you did your homework over the weekend, Steve. Uh, uh, you know, Euro's continuing, you know, has a little strength today. I know that you, you're you looking to get on board of uh, Euro crosses on pullbacks. Maybe and I think your... actually we might uh, we might be getting here. Uh, you remember that I said at the end of last week that I expect us to have some some pullbacks coming uh, soon so we can realign ourselves and actually we we are waiting you know for some pullbacks to pull the trigger on a blog uh, post we have been uh, uh, preparing about that actually you know to to help people uh, uh, you know get in uh, those trades I mean to at least set out our timing for doing it and you know people of course are supposed to do whatever they they feel is best for them right um, so here's a screen buddy if you want to show it uh, yes, I would actually, yeah, I, I will grab the screen because I actually wanted to show something rather maybe, related. I want maybe to talk. is, uh, with the metals weaker today and palladium was making, pushing new highs, maybe that's uh, starting to manifest. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. you know, that's a story we will, uh, we will revisit during the next few days because, okay. you know, uh, my, my triggers are not there yet, but... Okay. What I wanted to have a look at, and I, I, I already started having a look at it, and we talked about it last week, is um, it has to do with Aussie and Kiwi. And uh, mostly, if, for example, I was looking at uh, Aussie, Aussie, and I, I actually uh, shared a setup with uh, Sigma Square, and they tweeted it on uh, Friday morning US hours. Um, about the potential of a bounce, you remember we talked about the potential of a bounce for Aussie Yen. Yes. And actually, as it seems, this might be materializing. Let me let yeah, me switch. Yeah, like we look like we could have a C wave up. One more. Yeah. Do you yeah. see it? Yeah, and it's happening. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so this zone and the channel uh, that I was in, in, initially looking at have actually worked for the time being. Yeah. So perhaps a move somewhere here to the 61.8. There is a zone here also, previous previous bottoms here, so somewhere, I would say here, roughly, yeah. would be looking really good. For sure. For, 
for attempts, yes, to resort, yes. Okay. Okay. So that's that's risk on for another uh, what hundred pips? Perhaps yes, perhaps uh, because if you look at Aussie Aussie USD, we I, I actually wrote it to an analysis as well. Listen, I was looking to this very 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 important support zone for a breakdown, yeah. but we had already started creating this triangle. So uh, when we actually held the bridge over here, which was, you know, we, we, we saw, this is the nice thing about candlesticks, I mean, we saw three consecutive candlesticks warning that there is demand, uh, demand down here. And then we got the bounce here, we got rejected once, we got rejected twice. So this time when we bridged the zone again, I wasn't so outright bearish because we, you know, I actually wrote to my analysis that, you know, the, the confluence here of the 50% fee bent this triangle support is showing to, to be of some significance and look at the bounce we got today. But the question is what, what are we going to do now because we are retesting this triangle resistance, the 200 EMA is roughly 20 pips, let's say, 20, 25 pips above it. So uh, obviously somebody cannot say that, you know, you can be outright bullish. Of course, if you wanted to take Along here with a tight risk reward, that was a great trade if you want to trade shorter term. But breaking above here for just 20 pips obviously does not make a trade because we also uh, have this resistance zone. But you know the the Aussie still remains in some kind of a coiling formation, and I'm really really looking forward to seeing which way we're going to break. Kiwi, on the other hand, <clears throat> seemed to have broken below during the weekend. But that's why you all you also need to lead, to let some time pass because look at this this was a very major zone, and we did close below it. But as you see, that lasted only for a day because we opened the week uh, bouncing immediately above it. So for the time being, this is a false break. That doesn't mean that we will now go and rip and go 500 pips higher. But definitely, this is something I'm I'm paying attention to because very often you see very very brutal moves after false breaks. So uh, let me remove the magnet so we can do a proper work here. Uh, so this is something this I was nine and nine and a half uh, I had some moving averages for uh, retrace. Yeah so I, I'm really looking into it. I mean it's one if, of your zones. It's the next zone above where we held right around 960 ish right there. Yes, yes. Uh, 06970 is, is a very important yeah. zone. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. But we also have, you know, those trend lines that had been respected. Perhaps, I mean, the best case scenario for the bears is the broken support here will act as a resistance immediately and then we mm -hmm. will immediately resume to the downside. But th th these are some powerful opens. Although I have to, to say uh, and to, re to remind to people that Europe is mostly closed today because it's 1st of May, so usually under such conditions I would be very, very careful. Uh, perhaps we, we're seeing some moves that have, uh, you know, very, very little liquidity behind them. So I would definitely wait. Yes, so I would definitely wait for Tuesday before I, uh, I try to draw any, uh, any serious conclusions. Okay. Okay, thank you. Nice, Steve. Let's have a look at the Kiwi again since we went through uh, the pairs. Look at Kiwi Yen as well. It's an equivalent weakest. situation with, yeah. yes, which is the weakest, but it's an equivalent situation with what we saw with Aussie Yen. We had a steep channel after breaking, this, this was actually technically beautiful because this was a double top up here yeah. at a resistance zone. So we got a double top, we got a, a steep downtrend within a channel, we broke above the channel, we seem to be holding it on this ascending trend line. As long as we stay above the channel, we might see like A, B, C move a little bit higher perhaps. Ah, this is, let's say, a soft resistance zone we could look at. Somewhere here, for example, or a little bit lower here. I mean, you know, so uh, perhaps there is more juice to the upside before we can uh, look for further downside. And I think Blake went over that some 
time ago, but uh, even today he had a brief look at it. This is Aussie yen, but I, Aussie, sorry, Aussie kiwi, but I wanted us to have a, uh, a look at it from a longer term perspective uh, because I want to show the importance of some trend lines. So let me zoom out the pair and look at it. So this is Aussie yen, this is a daily chart. And Aussie this, kiwi. Aussie kiwi, sorry. And this yeah. is a huge, huge downsloping trend line that yeah. we've respected in the past. We briefly like, you know, had a look above it. Then we tested it again here. We got rejected and now we breached above it. And look what happened. We got something like a, like a bull flag formation, retested that broken line, and now we seem to be breaking above it. So a measured yeah. target, a measured Andy. target. We have the inner community called that at 670 for a, a, a yeah, that, monthly chart. It was a great that was, call. That was a excellent. That was an excellent call indeed. So, uh, for example, for the bull flag, a measured target would be 133.53. Here it is. I have it. And if you look at it, that's the beautiful with confluence. The, the, the beauty with confluence is if you look at that level, actually, roughly, you see where it passes from previous peaks. Yeah. Do you see it? Yes. But we yeah. also have this, this trend line at the shorter term I'm, uh, I'm monitoring, this blue trend line, which passes from around here, 11070, call it. But definitely, definitely looking at this, this is a bottoming formation very likely. This is a huge triangle breaking out. I, I mean, I find absolutely no reason why somebody would want to be short uh, Aussie Kiwi. Absolutely no reason. It would, in my opinion, it's extremely dangerous. Concur. Concur. Okay, those are well, the just, few things. You know, just uh, you know, some people do trade reactions. You know, they see, but you're, you know, I'm actually uh, thinking that we're going to go to your upper channel line, and that uh, the long term formation actually could give you a 120 handle plus. Oh, so easily. you know, yeah. So uh, I mean that. I've been talking about that pounding the table since the lows that we had back last fall. So uh, keep, in, um, keep in mind, even if if this this huge formation proves to be just a big consolidation after a very 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 strong downtrend, this this line here actually let me let me change it in color so we know what we're talking about. This line there and this line here are parallels. So even if this proves just to be a huge consolidative channel. Look, look so where this 116. is. One sixteen. Exactly. That's at one sixteen. So this is another line I'm looking at. So you know what we can do here is trade the levels. Where are the resistance levels? One, two, three. As easy as that. Beautiful. Everyone That's it, Dale. And now I will, I'll be leaving okay, in a while. Everyone thank. Steve Bogey for his great technical work. Uh, I learn every day as I look at Steve's charts. I'm sure I'm not the only one. I, I do have to show you guys something that I think that you'll... Uh, by uh, by the way, I'm here as well. I'm here okay, too. Okay, buddy. Uh, I'm, I'm one thing... I, when you're done... Uh, okay, I'll before, you, before you go, you know, everyone saw me in my, in my gear. I'm going to take the uh, screen back, but I have to... <laughs> this really cracked me and my wife up, all right? Hold on a second. I just got to show everyone this. Uh, all right, you guys are going to be amazed by this. I'm going to put on my webcam. So, you know, all you guys have seen me. It's my chart. They've seen me in my face gear, but check this out. All right. This is a Forex analytics mouse pad. I have never seen a bigger mouse pad in my life. I don't know, it's about over 14 inches long. I don't think it should be called <laughs> a mouse pad. I think it's more of a possum pad. Possums are pretty big. They look like huge rats or a roof rat. But 
Uh, give me a why if you, you've ever seen a bigger than mouse pad in your life. Huh? It takes up half my desk. Anyway, I wanted to show you guys that. And you can win that gear too. The biggest mouse pad ever created in uh, the history of the universe. You have one of those? <laughs> you have one of those on your desk, Stelios and Steve? Uh, we, we both, yeah, huh? we both do. The, the whole concept is that when you use multiple monitors, it's nice oh, to have okay. a better, a better surface, you know, so you can, so you can actually, you know, uh, browse through um, all of them. Because as you very well know, uh, many oh. of us traders use yeah. multiple monitors. Uh, you could even do yoga on it. You know, it could be a yoga <laughs> mat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I had to show the community that one. Oh, yeah, Mario used it <laughs> for a cushion. You know, some of us don't have big gluteus maximuses, and we need a cushion when we sit down. So, uh, all right, uh, Stelios, you have some comments, and you want to show anything? I do, yes. Uh, let all me, right. how do I take the screen? I'll give it to you. Thank you. Um, Hold on, I've got my kids here, so I'm going to go to another room. <laughs> a second. I've got my kid preparing to come to your house, by the way, Stelio. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> All right, show my screen. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not actually joking, Dale. That's what we're doing. It's a holiday here, so we're getting ready to go there. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I, I thought I thought you were just sending your child there. And, uh, no, no, I over. wish. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, they're, they're excellent parents with Samira, so they, I, I would have no problem if they kept it for a few days so we can relax. Yeah, I, I thought you wanted to shift a little responsibility here to Mr. Mom. Uh, <laughs> right, so can anybody, everybody, can everybody see my screen? Yeah, nice. You, you're a pound, so. So basically, yeah. I have just wanted to go through a few of my thoughts and the stuff I have on personally. Um, and uh, I'm going to start with the pound, which is something people follow me and know my views on it. I, I personally think that a lot, uh, post-referendum, there's a lot of stuff priced into the pound, which, okay, you know, there might be some reason for, for uh, nervousness and, and all that, but I think it's, uh, it's a little bit overdone. Um, there are a lot of events that can happen that can, that can really push the pound higher. And, um, and when I was looking for pairs to go along the pound against, uh, the ones that really caught my eye were the Euro and Kiwi at the time. And uh, the Euro mainly because the, the whole Brexit thing, it seems to be priced into the pound and not at all in the Euro. You know, I know it's, it's very crude to say it like that, but it's, uh, it's almost as if everybody's saying, yeah, it's going to be a huge problem for the UK, but really no big deal for the Eurozone. And you've got people like, uh, it was a Juncker or Tusk who said, uh, um, yeah, the Eurozone is going to be better off after the UK leaves, which I find, I find a bit ridiculous, you know, it can't be better off without, you know, the UK in the, in the Euro, but anyway, in the Eurozone, I mean. And, um, and um, so basically after the referendum, uh, at around 87-ish, I went short the um, the pound, and obviously everybody's looking. Sorry, short euro pound. Everybody's yeah. looking at this huge head and shoulders. We all know it's there. Uh, it's taking its time. I I really do think it's going to go lower um, in the medium term. You know, in the short term, you know, anything can happen. But uh, that's that's one I'm I'm looking at, and I still hold. And sterling kiwi is one of my favorites actually, and I've had this. Where would you say you're wrong? You know, I know there are a lot of bears here, and you know, the di you know, here's a Pinkertism. The difference yeah. between pros and amateurs are pros know how to lose, so they have money left to be right with. So, yeah. uh, you know, what's your line in the sand that uh, euro pound is not go not going lower? Uh, where would you have to change your mind? That's a very good uh, good question, and I always have that on entry. So basically, the the zone I'm looking at is this 88, 89 zone. Yeah. It, it might always overextend. So my line in the sand is around 0.9, so 90 basically, which okay. is you know it's it's a big it's a it's big percentage wise because I'm short at 87 and a half roughly. So you know it's not I'm not running it for 50 pips or something like that. But uh, my target realistically is you know first target is around 78 79 which i really do think it might hit that and then even further below so but 
to answer your question, my, my stop is around 90, which means, okay. which will mean if it gets there, uh, something's seriously wrong, you know, with the way the whole thing is being uh, um, approached. So if it blows out the right shoulder by 100 yeah. pips, yes, you're gone. Okay. Yes. Got it. Um, it might happen, you know, I've been wrong many times in the past, it might happen, but I really love this trade. Um, fundamental and also as a risk reward trade and the other one I really really like is again I put this on after the UK referendum um, Sterling Kiwi I'm um, long average around 180 just over 180 I went long and white 185 then again in the mid 170s so overall long around this zone um, I got out late last week people who follow me on Twitter will have seen my tweets I got out Thursday or Friday I can't remember They're just over 188 because there's this huge zone here, which if you go back, it's uh, it's a few years back that it, this zone is, is working. So I expect a pullback here, which we're seeing slowly today. Um, and, um, you know, if it gets anywhere near 81, 82, I know it's a long way, but, you know, Sterling Kiwi is very volatile. So it might very easily go down there. Um, I'm re-entering. And my, my targets are way above two. So... Uh, I think it's got a long way to go. And look at this line that is broken. Yeah. This is so you know one and a half year line, very strong. It's broken. You're gonna get a reaction, and then you keep going. And I have to remind people, you know, I'm I'm a macro trader. I don't I'm not a day trader. But I always look at these nice um, setups, you know, and the lines and the fibs. I look at them for entry and exit. Um, they don't they don't form a, a big part of my de trading decision in terms of if I go long or short. But they do give me the trigger levels. That's what I do. Um, did, you, about, did you learn that reading Jack Schwager's book, Market Wizards? <laughs> that was the first trading book I ever read. I remember my first boss gave it to me and he said, read this uh, and you'll learn about what trading is about. Because I, I used to be an IT man. So okay. that was, that was uh, yeah, it was very good. So and, does um, Steve yeah. Volge, you know that we're going to have Jack Schwager on, but he gave me a homework assignment first. I have to read his new book. But it's not have to, I, you know, I want to do it anyway. There's new books on uh, fundamental analysis in the markets. Uh, I, and, I think I'm definitely going to read that. Yeah. And, you know, he has uh, an organization called Fund Cedar where he funds promising traders. So he's looking for the new wizard. So uh, oh, I should have the book in a few days and I'll just speed read it and we'll have him here, I, I'm hoping, by the end of the month. Hmm. So, uh, okay, two more things I want to show, if we have the time for them. All right, I'll show uh, them. No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, go ahead. I love your I voice. Have I have diarrhea mouth sometimes, buddy. <laughs> go ahead. Um, so, two more things. One. Oh, yeah, your note. Um, the Norway, which I really like. It's been quite volatile. I've been, I've been personally short Euro Norway for uh, two or three times in the past couple of years. Um, but I really like dollar Norway as well. Uh, right now, uh, many reasons, you know, I've, I've, I've made, um, uh, you know, people who are subscribers can see in my macro analysis why I like uh, being long Norway and short uh, dollars, but, uh, you know, the, the, the main problem, let's say, with Norway at the moment is oil. That's, that's all that's giving weakness to Norway. Otherwise, it's fundamentally very strong country, very stable currency, you know, really healthy, they're running surpluses, inflation is good. Unemployment is incredible, you know, GDP is stable. In every way, it's great, but oil is just pushing it lower, uh, pushing Norway lower, I mean, um, temporarily. And, and there's a lot of fear being priced into Norway because of oil, and I think that's going to go away eventually. You know, maybe not in the next week or two or month, but this is going to go. Um, so I really like short here, uh, and we have that in uh, on FA. Yeah, your macro. Yes. Why don't you go um, to the tra go to the traffic light page and show where you yeah. have it? So well, I've got it. I've, I've got yeah. it here on the um, uh, on the analysis. So basically, I've got a nice chart which is overlaying oil as well on the bottom. So you can see last time Euro, uh, sorry, dollar Norway has been around fifty nine, right. sixty, whatever. Um, oil um, has been sorry. Last time, oil has been at these levels around fifty dollars. Your uh, dollar Norway has been lower. It's been quite, yeah. quite a bit lower, like between eight and eight, eight forty. So there's a lot of things which I think are short term. Obviously, the market can stay um, short term f 
away from where you think it should be for longer than you can handle it. <laughs> That's why my trades are always um, low leverage and, and I'm very controlled in, in the way I, I trade. Uh, I'm out, of curi out of curiosity, do you use about 10 to 1? Uh, for some trades I do, for, for others I don't. Like this Norway trade is only like 3 to 1. So okay. I'm, I, I, especially with the markets as we have been the last few years, uh, I'm, right. I've turned down my leverage quite a bit because you, know, you can get blown up very easily. Um, and and you, and it's so much easier to uh, withstand any, you know, being wrong for a few days or even a week, and and course. being a, and then if you still believe in it, building the position, right? Of course, exactly. That's exactly what I do. And my Euro Norway position, for example, now is is underwater. It's the third one I've done in the last two years, and it's underwater. I'm down like two or three percent. I don't care. You know, I'm, if it goes anywhere higher. Uh, Euro Norway that is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna add more so okay. it's just the way I do it you know my my leverage is low so my profits it's are lower as well but um, my my goal from day one was to be to stay in the game you know to not blow up so th that's what I do smart um, and the last one I want to show again people who follow me will know I, I look at that all the time is silver um, again a trade which I've done probably four or five times in the last three years always playing it on the long side and I like silver a lot because it trades quite technically. If you if you take away those um, single day hammers <laughs> that keeps that keep happening, you know, silver keeps getting hammered down on random days. Uh, but if you take away that, it's trading quite technically and quite um, it's quite clean the way it trades. So you got these well defined resistance and support zones, and it just touches them, go down, up and down. So I was long. I, I'm still am long, but I've, I've I took about half of it off. Um, a week ago, when it was about 1850, as it was getting into this zone here, this yeah. big resistance zone, and now I got along again last Friday, uh, because so last week, so because I like, you know, I like this uh, trend line here. I really love silver long term. I cannot say this enough. I I think silver will be hitting, you know, mid 20s within a year from now, and and I, I, I I'm. Pretty confident about that, but I think um, uh, I'm not sure if it's Greg or Nick that has a, a pattern that would take it to 1680. So I mean, 1710s close enough for a long-term position trader. Exactly, and, and my stop, yeah. my stop is not going to be 1680. You know, my stop right. is going to be, and I'm not kidding, it's going to be around yeah. 14s, 15s. You know, so. Um, so uh, you might but, even buy. You might even add on at 1680 if it's offered. Yeah, probably not 1680. I'll, I'll be looking to to add on like low 16s if it gets okay. back to this this zone here. But yeah, so that's um, that's another trade that I really like, and it's been frustrating. You know, this latest long that I've got is is underwater at the moment. Actually, no, we're, I'm small up, but basically, it's it's very it's very volatile. Like silver is is gold on drugs, like somebody had said. Um, so it, it's a tough one, but you know, I'm, I'm, never heard I'm, that one. Yeah, golden drugs, yeah. golden steroids, <laughs> all that. Yeah. So, so that's the kind of stuff I look at. And and again, I'm not my stops are not close to to where I enter. And then again, my my targets are not close either. So, um, uh, I I did try a few years back to 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 trade more like a you know put day trades on and do much more short term trading. It didn't work for me at all. I'm just not cut out for it. I think so. I just abandoned that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stelios. No problem, man. Nice look. So everyone thanks Stelios and Steve Volge and Blake. And I have a few ideas as well. So, you know, I'm looking to fade dollar weakness in the next couple of days. Yeah, these guys are good. Very good team. Hold on a second. I, uh, my guest is Skyping me. Nanette, Nanette is uh, Skyping me. Let's see if he's having issues getting into the room. Okay. And what I'm going to do is take a break before I start this interview.
Okay. So let's see, Dale Pinker, Dale Pinker. Make me the presenter. Okay, we're getting uh, WTI. Okay. Then that's going to be here soon. So, you know, I'm kind of in the, uh, in the camp. I started talking about some divergences that are happening here in the pound where, you know, we could, uh, the team could have different views. You know, I don't have a gap up here like I have in Euro in the pound. You know, that might be a breakaway gap. We blew, but I, I'm looking at maybe this 130 level. See how we're making new highs and not confirming here, this high right here, barely over 70. So what I'm going to do, my fellow warrior, training warrior, brothers and sisters, is take a quick break before uh, we go ahead. I know you're with me, Dan. That's one of the reasons. Yeah, 130 to 131. Maybe for a pullback to 25, that'd be normal. So I, I'm just going to uh, put on a, I'm just going to, I'm not even going to put on a commercial. I'm just going to put up a sign so you guys could see it. Freeze my screen for a few minutes. Uh, appreciate your pet. Yeah. And I'll be back in, say, about five minutes or so, and uh, uh, we'll just have a quick run, run, uh, run down into the NADS interview. So stick around for at Tarantula FX. Nanette is a great technician. I've known him for years. Uh, he gets a lot of accolades on FX Street. Uh, he's an analyst for Admiral Markets. I forgot the name. Uh, him and Chris Sforchik are partners. I think it's Elite Currencies is the name of the uh, website, Elite. And it's a great title because Nanad's views are elite. I know we're going to learn something from him. So stick around, and I'll be back in about five. Thank you for your attention, and give me a Y if you love face. Give me a Y if you love face. And I'll be back in a couple. Okay, everybody, thanks for your patience and sticking around. Nanette is very popular, so people are going to stick around for him. Let me let me say something about Nanette before I give him controls over our lives and our screens. He is very popular on FX Street. And, <clears throat> oh, thank you very much. Glad to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, what is it? Aya Sean Turner, very nice to meet you. So uh, Nanette is very popular on FX Street, and there are hundreds of analysts there. So to stand out on FX Street takes talent and skill. So um, I'm really looking forward to talking to Nanette. I haven't talked to him in a long time. So being here in face and doing interviews, I haven't really done any interviews for almost a year. Uh, since I left FX Street, because I was just in a trading room um, and not bringing in guests because, you know, the people that own that service were, you know, uh, worried about competition, unlike us. So, again, uh, I'm going to bring in the best of the best for everyone here because our mission here at Forex Analytics is to build up and edify traders every day, no matter the risk of losing the subscriber. So, um, you know, if you like Nanette, go, you know, it is going to be recorded, Nanette. Uh, we do record these. So we're not going to worry about it. In fact, we're okay with it. We're, we're not, we don't come from scarcity. You know, people who come from scarcity, they're afraid of 
uh, their limited supply of whatever it is, money, subscribers, food. They're always worried about running out and losing their supply. Uh, you know, we believe that there's an abundant amount of supply out there. There's enough people to go around. Um, most people subscribe to more than one service. I use more than one gas station. Uh, some people have more than one FX account. They use different brokers for different reasons. So it's quite okay. Or in fact, if you find someone to, that subscribes to one service, there's a high probability they'll subscribe to another service. Right? Give me a why if you agree with me. So I, I think we're the only ones doing this. Um, and this is a reflection of the leadership of Blake Morrill. Okay, because I brought it up to Blake. I said, you know, this room has a lot of value, great, great calls, the community's great. You know, my analysis, uh, I'm right uh, in like a broken clock twice a day and that it's worth money. Yeah, so, but Blake wanted to be, you know, he wants to win the Nobel Peace Prize for humanitarianism. Uh, I definitely will nominate Blake Morrow for that. So let me start the search for Nanad here, and I'm going to give him the controls. And maybe Nanad will give us a treat and actually even turn on his webcam. So you guys could see what I'm talking about physically. Now, you know, Vin Diesel is a warrior. In every movie, almost every movie he makes, he's a warrior. You know, he'll take hits, he'll get back up off the ground. He's a gladiator. And I know Nanette is as well. Because, in fact, you know what? Every one of you in here is a gladiator. Because you have, you have courage. You're brave. You're not risk averse. You're willing to do what most people will not do. And so I salute each and every one of you here in FACE and anyone I met in LAR, anyone I know from Twitter that is a trader. It takes, this is what I used to say, it takes the heart of a lion, the spirit of a warrior, and the mind of a trader. And I know Nanette has all three of those qualities. So Nanette, I'm passing over uh, the controls to you. So I should be able to hear your voice in a minute or so, and then you could share your screen. And anytime you're ready, we could get this interview going. I know it's still a couple minutes early, but what the heck. Hey, Dale, I'm here. Oh, Nanette, it is so great to see you. And you know what? It would be even greater to see you if you just put on your webcam for just a second so people don't think I'm insane. The, you know, because I've talked about, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that has said that you look like Vin Diesel, only handsomer. So, you know, if you could go ahead, <laughs> if you want to show your mug, that's fine. If yes, not. Yes, of course. All right, here he comes. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm okay. here. You see, I right. don't look quite like a Vin Diesel when I put my <laughs> headset here you see now it's not quite like that but when i turn it down and when i remove it okay now it's it's yeah more, right come on let's see forex gal don't you guys agree with me that he has uh he, he has a common appearance to vin diesel anyway Maybe. great to great to have you with us warrior my trading warrior brother nanette i haven't talked to you in a year or so so this is like a reunion for us so uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day. Nanette's with Admiral. He's with, uh, what's it called, Elite Currencies with Chris. Yeah. And you're, you're a real busy guy. You're a star on FX Street. And so thank you for taking time to uh, show your face on face. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dale. Thanks uh, a lot. Okay. I really, it's been an honor to speak to you, and I'm always happy when I schedule webinars and interviews with you, because I know that you're a genuine guy, a genuine trader, 
and I'm really, I need to say, sick and tired of those people who are just hiding behind their screens and they're actually doing nothing for the community, just living by, by their, uh, I don't know, old glory, if I can say. But I'm th that I know that you actually trade, you have your live trading rooms, and we both know how it's, it's very hard to actually trade in front of the audience. Yeah, so, and you know what? I, when I was first, when I first came into the business, Nanad, you were probably weren't born yet, okay? But yeah, uh, but a veteran trader pulled me aside, and he said, "Kid, this is a tough way to make an easy buck," and he was definitely <laughs> he was definitely correct on that. So um, you know, why don't I just start with a little bit of background uh, yeah. for our community? How did you end up being an FX trader and get in the business, Nanad? Well, the first of all, before I got into this business, I actually worked for an outsourced agency for BNP Paribas Funds. So mm -hmm. we actually had an offer from uh, the agency who worked with uh, BNP Paribas Bank to offer them, uh, well, to actually we, we wanted to offer people to sign up for different contracts uh, regarding different hedge funds. And then I saw that uh, basically in those, uh, let's say, statements, uh, I saw that there was like 30, 35, 34 percent of wins or uh, uh, ROI during a single year. And I was wondering if a bank trader could earn like 30, 35 percent ROI in a single year. Uh, is it possible that I myself can earn maybe a little bit more by trading myself, not hedge fund, but my own account? And then. Yeah. I actually uh, started to look for uh, different brokers. I am an economist, so I knew what Forex was, but uh, basically I didn't know how to trade. And then I decided to actually uh, uh, give up that kind of work, and I wanted to actually trade myself. And I delve into Forex market, I start reading a lot, I start working a lot, I still have some day job that was in an office, but every time my boss uh, kicks in, I actually press my Windows button and I hide my screen from him. So basically, I was, yeah, I, I'm very honest. And basically, I was cheating at my day job because I wanted to trade. I wanted to be someone in, in this market because I knew I, I could succeed. And then I was watching 24-7, literally 24-7. When I yeah. got back home, I watched the charts. On my day job, I watched charts. My boss kicks in. I just press Windows button. And I almost got fired because he caught me, because I was so into charts and I was so into trading on my day job. And he actually came in and he said, OK, Nana, what are you doing now? Are you not doing your, your job? And I said, yeah, I'm just watching stock market. But I was watching Forex, but he didn't know the difference between Forex and stock market. So I just said I was watching stock market. And then he said, OK, uh, I will talk to your manager. He called manager and he said, OK, your employee is watching uh, the market. He is not working what he should. And I said, OK, I, I did my work. Here is, this is my work. Now just please let me finish this. It's only 10 minutes. And he was so pissed off, but you know, yeah. it actually paid off. I actually. Uh, I quit my uh, day job maybe after a year of uh, demo trading and live trading on smaller accounts. And now you don't have to hide your screen from anybody. Are no. you married? No, not at all. <laughs> Are you I married? Want, uh, I was, uh, sorry, Dale, I didn't hear you. Are you married? Yes, I am. Right, and you uh, don't have to hide. You don't have to hide your screen from your wife, do you? Yeah, of course. I don't. I mean, <laughs> my wife is is ten years younger. She's also very beautiful, and she's also my uh, lover and my friend. So she knows what I'm doing. So it's of course. <laughs> so it's of course always good to have a wife that is very very friendly. Yeah, she's not a typical. You know, you really wife. need a special woman that's going to be supportive of. Yeah. Her husband being a speculator. I know that. Ah, yeah, true so, that. She knows yeah. that I'm popular. She knows that a lot of, well, actually, girls like to take some pictures with me, so she doesn't <laughs> mind. <though>. She's normal. <laughs> All right, buddy. So, you know, last week, the French elections, and we're looking at your Euro chart, and mm -hmm. the big question everyone is asking is, is that gap going to be filled? And okay. No, and, uh, you know, I, they, people ask me, well, I go, well, if it's a breakaway gap, you know, people are under the misconception uh -huh. that every gap is filled, okay? <laughs> and, 
And, uh, you know, it could take a year and a lot of magnitude of price movement before that happens. And if this is a breakaway gap, and we start closing back over, I don't know, 110-ish, 11050, uh, it's going to look like the euro's really going to come out of here. So I'm interested in what you're seeing here and what you're thinking. Okay, now I'm watching two screens, so maybe I cannot look directly in front of my camera, but never mind. Okay, uh, first of all, I warned that uh, this could be a breakaway gap, and uh, I'm I absolutely agree with you uh, because we have uh, common gaps. Common gaps are usually filled, right, but right. Uh, breakaway and runaway gaps usually happen after some strong news, some some strange events in forex market, in, in stock market. It's more common, but honestly. Uh, I, I, I knew this was a breakaway gap simply because uh, the result of uh, uh, French uh, pre-polling show some different different result. Actually, Le Pen was in lead uh, just before the elections, and then Macron slightly got ahead. But market obviously tried to price in Le Pen's victory, and right. when this news kicked in, it was like surprise. So I don't think the gap will will be filled uh, before uh, the second round. Okay. So uh, I'm looking you at know, it. I, I, I have to commend you. Uh, you know, you're, you're younger than me. Most people in the business are. But for you to have a knowledge of different types of gaps, where did you learn that? Because I learned it from an old Bible, technical Bible, called Technical Analysis of Stock Trends by Edwards and McGee. And that was in the 70s. So how do you know the difference between breakaway and area gaps? And you probably even know what an island top and island bottom is. And yes, you know of, course, about of course I know. I, 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 if, you, if you think about the rooftop and inverted rooftop and uh, those kind of patterns like V-shaped diving board reversals, absolutely. But I learned it harder way. I learned it when I burnt my account. Okay. So that is when I learned. Because I also try to trade most of the time when I was a new trader a rookie trader I tried to trade every single gap that I saw and then okay. actually when I when I saw that no not every single gap will be filled I I, I try to to read about it and I, I don't see. remember what was the article about gaps or I read it somewhere on the internet but I actually talked to my friend who is also a full-time trader, he is an equity full-time trader, he lives in Australia, he's a great guy, and he actually helped me understand the basic of gaps, the difference between interbank and retail market, and, uh, well, basically that is, I always learned it harder way, so, uh, yeah, when I started too, to trade, there was no one to teach me, so. You, you know, know, someone once said to me, Nanette, and uh, you're, I think you have a similar personality type to me, they would say, Dale, how many times do you have to get hit in the head with a ball peen hammer to know it hurts? Okay, so uh, you know you had someone that helped you out, and what I love about you is all the landmines that you have stepped on. Your mission is that people don't have to go through it if they listen to you. They could all they could learn from your mistakes so that they don't have to they don't have to go through that type of pain. So I, I commend you on that, but I, I'm like you. I always have to learn the hard way. Yeah, it's it's always like that, and that is what I what I like about this job. I mean, yes, I work uh, for a good and regulated big. For me, currently the best broker, and really that they're, they're very, and I'm always honest with them, and I appreciate that they actually are giving me freedom. Uh, to use the opportunity to actually tell the people the truth. So all people who listen to me know that in, in, in trading it's, it will always be losses and it will always be losing. But the big yes. time and the, the holy grail of not losing in forex market is a good money management. That is the holy grail, money yes. management. And everything that I learned, I learned I mean 90% of that, uh, I learned from my own mistakes. And that is right. what I want to pass the knowledge to other people who are also traders. Both you and I are traders. Why not tell to other people who also want to trade? It's possible to make money, but it's hard. And you need to have a plan. You need to have a battle plan. You need to actually be a warrior, as you say, Dale. Always yeah. be a yeah. warrior. So let's but, get back to let's get back to this Euro chart. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now I'm... And uh, no I noticed you had some certain areas marked. Uh, I'm looking at uh, uh, U.S. and China trade war page right now. I'm not seeing the charts, but uh, waiting to see your euro chart again. Uh, can I share my screen now? 
Yeah, you you are sharing your screen. Oh, okay, yeah. here. Uh, okay. Is there it okay go. now? Okay. All right. So uh, so tell me what you're seeing. You have uh, looks like are they weekly pivots? The W is that what the W yeah. means? Okay. Yeah, so, okay. Now I will I will explain now. So okay. the first thing here is this is euro dollar four hour time frame. This is monthly Camarilla pivot. This is EMA 89. I really believe into EMA 89 simply because 89 for me is uh, even more important than 61.8. And in trading, it's uh, 88.6 Fibonacci retracement. For me, it's more important than any other number on, on chart. So the, that is the moving the moving average, the blue line, is an 89 day. Exactly. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. 89. Yeah, I've, never, I've never heard that anyone use that before. So that's a pearl. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I, I can explain why I use it because I already developed, I still didn't, uh, haven't uh, made any copyright on that, but the pattern is called <laughs> T89. Uh, All right. Yeah, I'm okay. not Steve Nixon, but I still know about can, <laughs> candlesticks. <laughs> okay, well, got you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's T89. Actually, it's my proprietary pattern that is solely seen on uh, 89 EMA. I can explain later. But uh, one of the things why I use 89 is because 88.6 is a very important number in, in trading. And also, here is it's Camarilla. Uh, this Camarilla is actually made to suit by uh, trading style because uh, when I put a four-hour time frame, we can see weekly Camarilla levels like H3, yeah. H4, H5. And then we see uh, uh, pivot points like uh, supports. Uh, L3, right. L4, L5. This is ATR. This is intraday pivot points with ATR right. projection high, ATR projection low, and these right. are monthly pivot points. If wow. we zoom into one hour time frame, we will see actually only these weekly pivot points in confluence with daily. So now we need to watch for our time frame because we are talking about some intra week perspective or let's say intra month, but this is more like intra week perspective. This is potential head and shoulders in, in progress. But uh, I don't think that we will see any gap close before I already explained it before this low is taken out. It's very important to let's see this uh, data window here. So this low is exactly at 1.0820. We know that 20, 50s, and 0, 00s are natural support and resistance number. Right. So now we have a confluence here. It's weekly L4. It's also the low of this. So I, I wouldn't uh, trade this until this low is taken out. Only that. That is w what I can tell about a possible gap close. But I don't know where we'll I think that market is waiting for a second round of elections that are due in six days. That is my okay. opinion. I don't okay. see any catalyst at this point for a move on euro dollar. So one of the how reasons... About, how, about a, how about a dovish or hawkish uh, statement out of the Fed this week? I think that'll uh, yeah, move it? Possibly, well, yeah, possibly Fed could make the move. But you know what I say. I usually say uh, react, don't predict. So on yes. this occasion, I would definitely like to react. I would yeah. probably go with a sell. I already told it on my live webinar. I would go here with a sell, but only if this low is taken out. I cannot guess whether they will come with bullish or bearish statement. The best is to place an order. And once you are filled, your order is filled, just try to uh, protect it with profit uh, stop. So once it starts to move below 1,020, try to watch these levels and just move your stop loss into profits. That is the best way to trade these kind of gaps. I know okay. that many people and traders have been trapped into trading this uh, breakaway gap or yeah. we still not, don't know if it's a runaway gap. If it starts to make higher highs, then it will be definitely a runaway. But in this, in this moment, what I can tell is you can definitely try to short it below this low. Until then, really, I don't know. Maybe bad, uh, some sort of yeah, fast maybe we're, going, maybe we're going to 115, 117, 120. I mean, that would just be a normal retracement move from the move down from 140 to 104, 103. Um, how will you know, um, what would get you long this market? A long on euro dollar, you mean? Yes. What uh, would well, get you long? Uh, yeah, uh, from current perspective, uh, what I see is along the dip here, exactly around this weekly 
confluence. So we have I 18 see. pivot point, we have weekly L3. So if the price drops here, I would go long. Still, it's a good risk to reward because until this low is taken out, a euro dollar does not have to do anything with bears. Also, right. uh, Dale, I need to say, people don't read data correctly. Uh, the problem is Fed, in my opinion, doesn't seem interest in GDP data because advanced GDP price index it's another measure of inflation and that is what the Fed is interested in. So advanced right. GDP is just a GDP growth measure but price index is an inflation measure and Fed is only interested in inflation and deployment. And so, that's a great point because uh, when Draghi was on last week he said it uh -huh. was tame and then the, then the German numbers came out and it wasn't so tame and then we made another move up towards the high, up towards that uh, 109.70 level. So exactly. uh, you're saying in in all countries, ignore GDP prints, pay attention to inflation prints. Yes, inflation, that is what central banks are watching. That is yeah. what Fed is interested. Fed is interested in inflation and employment. That is very, very important. Also, people, people simply cannot cannot understand, they, they cannot comprehend the difference between stock market and forex market. I will just go slightly, Dale, if you allow me, into stock market. Uh, for all people who trade stocks, they need to watch price to earnings ratio. Price okay. to earnings ratio is the main indicator to value stocks. So it, is, it essentially means the number of years of earnings required to pay back the investment in purchasing the stock. The higher the PE, the more expensive and longer it takes to pay back the stock. So normal market valuations range around 14 to 16, but the higher the PE, the more volatile the stock will be, and during recessions, PE can even drop below 10. So why I'm talking about this? Because of, uh, uh, because of um, correlation between equities and forex market, okay? Yeah. That is important. Yen is the pair, to, uh, right. yen is the currency to watch the correlation with equities. It's not dollar, guys. It's yen, okay? Great point. Yeah, that's the risk on the carry trade, everything. Exactly. And okay. also... Why? Because Japanese can get cheap credit, so they invest overseas heavily. When it's risky, they bring back the money, creating demand for yen. It's called, it's called repatriating. And right. vice versa, when it's bullish equities, they pump their money overseas, which means they sell yen and buy foreign currency. That oh, is very okay. important. Uh, guys, if you're trading stock markets, Watch price to earnings ratio. If you want to watch correlation, trade yen. I personally prefer yen pairs over dollar pairs. Do you uh, do you agree with uh, Chris Laurie that the Aussie yen is the best instrument for risk on risk off, or do you think that Euro yen is a better guide for risk on risk off? Uh, I uh, well, I I I don't know what Chris, Chris Laurie says, but uh, what you said is is uh, very very true. I also learned about uh, and and uh, I actually uh, had a seminar, uh, a webinar actually that was simply uh, I simply explained the correlation between yen and I said definitely Australian dollar yen. For me, it's Australian okay. dollar yen. Why? Because it's in risk on environment. Commodities prices tend to increase and traders okay. go long. They, they long Australian dollar, dollar due right. to that factor. When commodities prices go up, stock markets go up, and there is demand for positive swaps on Australian dollar pairs currently as opposed to Japanese yen. When it's risk off, us, usually we see the opposite occurring. As a result, Japanese yen appreciates as foreign flows from Japan are repatriated back to their local currency. And yes, so I can agree with Chris Laurie. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of a legend. Uh, so yeah, then, uh, really, yeah. so really, you know, the yen, uh, to me, on some of my longer-term views, looks like 113 in the yen, to me, is going to be a, an important battleground area I, for risk on, risk off. I'm wondering what you see. Uh, you think about dollar-yen, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Here... Okay, I, I, okay, see here, this is so-called bullish SHS or uh, shoulder-head-shoulder, inverted yeah. head-and-shoulder it's called. Uh, definitely, 
this is what needs to be broken. Okay, one of the reasons why I prefer Forex market is so-called, I call it historical versus now moment perspective. In Forex market, prices tend to repeat. Okay, so the moves that happen in the past tend to happen in now moment. So if right. we align uh, historical buyers and sellers with now moment buyers and sellers, we will always get the same point that the price could reject from a certain perspective. Here, this is very clear to me. This was definitely the, uh, the place when dollar yen spiked. We can call it this a zone. In now yeah. moment, this zone is here. It's around 112, uh, 20 to 30. But again, okay. if you watch a longer term perspective, we can actually place, a, uh, okay, I will do it quickly. This is a trend line. And watch where this trend line is crossing. It's called the next cross. So it's very close to your 113 level. It's actually month, monthly H3 level. So if okay. this level uh, is broken, this should definitely come here. And above this level, it will be all about dollar yen bull. So I can agree with you. 113 is a very, very important level. Also, we can mark the level here on our charts and if we open let's say weekly charts we can see that this is the level that bulls want to take because yeah. this is the rooftop this rooftop will be taken out then and it I will see. be another push this is v-shape reversal right something big Power. Is it's normally very powerful and oh and you know what there's a great example um uh you know we're looking at the euro all you have to do is go back a few uh uh weeks and that gap up we had in the end look it's not filled anyone who's shorting it looking for it to be filled uh you know uh if they did it right away they're uh, taking heat on price and it still you know could remain unfilled for a while for a long time so that may also end up being a breakaway gap uh which pair dale uh the yen it's almost you know, like the euro no yeah, you see that gap where your cursor is, or maybe that's my cursor, but it gapped up from here to here. Oh, and... I don't see your screen. Wait. I need okay, to... yeah, you don't see my screen, but you see the gap that we had at the end of April? It was a huge gap. I, I don't dollar, know what. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's another, uh, uh, would you consider that possibly a breakaway gap? Uh, this one, small one. Yeah, but further out when it was going up. I need to I need to see it here. Let me just zoom it out. Mm. On the way up to new highs, it left a gap on your chart. Mm. I just see this one. This yeah, is yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. That's it. Oh that's yeah, I was talking. also talking about that gap. Yeah, this yeah. is a breakaway gap that can turn into runaway gap. Yeah. Okay. All right. So but there. You see. So we're getting. You know. Gaps are pretty unusual in FX because they trade 24-6, so they normally happen over a weekend. Yeah, and, it, it, the risk yeah, on, go ahead. It, that is the risk what investors simply don't want to take. That is why we see profit taking on Friday. And I, and I said, I will trade this gap, but only if it, if it breaks below 0, 0.820. Why not? I will put a small risk because I can even place a 100 pip stop with 2% uh, of risk. So let's say that this gap is not closed after this low is taken out. If I put my stop loss here, let's say, or if I put my stop loss here, I will always have my 2% of risk. So I, I don't really care if I will lose if I lose 2%. But the logic is when to trade it. When right. this low is taken out, then is the time to trade it. Until then, we cannot trade it. Why would I place a, a short sell now? I don't see any potential for a short sell. The only right. thing that I see is a probable move up even below 1.10. I, I can even dare to say we might see this uh, H4 here with 111. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> there's a lesson. The lesson from the NAD is don't anticipate a gap exactly. being, being filled. Wait for price action to give you a reason to commit to that scenario. Exactly, because we cannot trade only because we see a gap. The gap simply exists in retail uh, market. If you watch into a bank market, you will, see, you will not see any gap because market is trading each day. 
there is a website I usually follow it. It's called WW. I mean, it's not any advertisement, but they, they show always real rates. It's uh, xc.com, so you can see the rates over the weekend. And I was right. actually I, I I had a trade on Euro GBP. I had a long trade just just before uh, the elections, and I actually made a live uh, recording. It was 135 pips win, and I was actually following what Euro GBP did on uh, on xc.com because. Guys, you cannot open and trade your platform if you trade with retail, retail brokers right on on um, <clears throat> Friday or sorry on on yeah, Saturday until, and Sunday. Yeah, until Sunday night. Exactly. So okay. you you actually need to you know you you need to be ready for that kind of risk. But in this occasion, what I would do, I would I wouldn't go with with pending order strictly with market order because if it gaps down on some surprise news over the weekend it will not open here where I placed my entry but it will open where where the gap actually is so yeah, sometimes, that is why I, hmm? yeah sometimes limit orders limit success I say you know uh, so many people especially when they're coming out come out at a limit if it's uh, your entry or exits within five or ten pips and you're uh, in front of your platform who needs the anxiety of being unable uh, and not getting filled? Go, go to the market <clears throat> is a philosophy of mine. I have a couple of questions for you from the community. Mm -hmm. Robert is asking, where can we get the same pivot set up for MT4 that you have? Yeah, this is actually a custom-made indicator, and okay. currently, uh, Elite Currency, we are actually making it available uh, okay. for all traders. So it, it's still in phase of coding. Uh, it's like 90, 95% of it has been coded. So uh, you guys can just email me. So when it when it comes uh, with a final, or let's say when we, we when we publish a final version of it, when it's completely coded, then I can send it to you. So you just send an email to torrentialfx at gmail.com I will send you this once it's completed but before I also have a great Camarilla indicator that is slightly different because you need to change levels manually I I can show it here okay. uh, let me just remove this one and I will put that one so guys this is free for all so you just email me and definitely you can have it let okay. me just find it uh, yeah, I will. All right, I, I have a, I have another question. Do you have a view on the bond markets in the U.S. and perhaps the Bund? Because no. a lot of people, a lot of people trade euro based upon the two-year uh, U.S. bond, and I don't know what they do for. Uh, uh, they use you know interest rate uh, bond market vehicles for the interest rate differential. I was wondering. Someone's asking. A reef is asking. If uh, no, Luca, because Luca is a, a bond bear. Do you have a view on uh, the U.S. bond market or EU bond market? No, uh, basically I don't watch uh, euro, dollar, and bond market in any correlation. Okay. I only watch bond market with with Fed hike and treasuries, and I usually look at 12-month treasuries because it's the equivalent of the Fed cash rate due to its low risk investment being a government bond. Okay, so 12 month is like a one year T bill. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Another that is question. What I watch. Okay, but not for question, Another question is: uh, Arif Hussein wants to know if you have a view on gold. Gold. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, but traders usually uh, ask me about gold, and uh, this is it. Uh, this is the goal. We can say basically that this uh, retail gap uh, has been closed. I mean, it's like two, three pips shy. Pro, but this is the zone. This is that zone. I call it low volatility zone because it, at this zone, at the last, uh, at the last price section, it showed uh, it, it was not high volatility. So this zone is very, very crucial. What I would say is, if we zoom out, let's say we are talking now from intraday, intraweek perspective, because we are using four-hour chart. Don't forget, guys, when you ask me about gold view, you need to be also more specific. Uh, uh, every time frame has its yeah, own. Yeah, and how about against a different currency? Gold against U.S. dollar, gold against yen, gold against euro. Yes, and also it's it's about time frames because guys, every time frame has its own trend. So if you if you want if you want to piggyback momentum from uh, let's say from higher time frame trends, then you need to watch let's say for intraday I watch four hour, one hour. And occasionally, yeah. I can switch also to M30 if I trade wolf waves. I prefer M30. But the thing is, here, 
this is uh, in uptrend. This is order yeah. block, okay? Now, I will be fast with this. Order block, by its basic definition, is bullish or bearish. Bullish order block uh, is a high uh, of a bearish candle prior to move up. Uh, I personally say it's not uh, about bullish or bearish candle, it's about the wick. Wick is more important than the body. So this is uh, order block. This is strictly bullish order block. It has a confluence with L3 ATR pivot point. We can also right. place a trend line here. So I think this market could jump easily. Okay. What a so great I, interview. What a great interview, buddy. I, I, you know, it was so great hearing your voice and your command of what's going on in the markets and your conviction. And um, if you would give your uh, email address again, uh, maybe uh, Steve, if you're listening, you could type it out for everyone that's interested in yes. uh, getting the pivot points from Naned. And uh, I encourage everyone to follow Naned at Tarantula FX on Twitter and. Uh, at Elite Currencies with him and his partner, Chris Sporchek, and Chris is a great Elliottician. And I want to thank you so much, my brother, for coming on and spending time in the FACE community and supporting my new effort to edify traders every day. Yeah, and thank you, Dale. All, it's always a great opportunity, and it's always a great honor for me to chat with you and other traders. And guys, wherever you live, wherever you may be, uh, have in mind that I will, as long as I have the power to, I will support you always, and I will always try to help you. What is really, really in your, in your best interest is to follow Dale. Uh, try to follow me because I will be always honest with you. I don't hide my losses. I don't talk just about wins. Uh, we can lose, we can actually win, but the most important things, as long as we know what to do, as long as, as we apply money management, proper money management, we should be safe. So there you go, everyone. That's Nanette Kerkez, my trading warrior brother with a giving spirit. And you don't find a lot of that. Our, our industry is filled with barracudas and sharks. Yeah. And there's a, there's a guy that's going to help you. Uh, uh, so you want to say your email again one more time, Nanette, before we say yes. goodbye? I already wrote it down. It's tarantulafx at gmail.com. Okay. And uh, that is my email. And just for this pivot point indicator, you can guys have it, uh, this previous version. So just email me, and I can send it to you. It's, of course, free. So just try to uh, watch my previous recordings about Camarilla and so on and try to see how I trade my analysis so you will understand a little bit more what is going on by using Camarilla indicator. And thanks again, Dale. Uh, well, let's not let a year pass, buddy. Now that, uh, you know, I feel pretty comfortable and uh, happy about this new association with Blake and the rest of the team. I'm going to be here. Uh, for I'm going to be here for maybe, uh, I'm hoping it's my last stop. You know, I'm kind of like a journeyman baseball player. I go from team to team, you know. Yeah, and, but you're uh, a living legend, Dale. Uh, and uh, I hope that we can uh, do this more frequently. You know, every other month or something like that, I could bring you back. And you are you made it easy for me. You're a great guest, Manette. Yes, Thank you, buddy. yes, I'm up for that, and I will always help you out. Just call me, and I will be there. No problems at all. All right, good hunting, bro. Doing? I hope I hope that the pips rain down on you and everyone that you're assisting and paying forward. Thank you, brother. Yes, and 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 to you today, and just before I quit, one more thing that I will never forget, and you actually said it correct. When uh, people ask us, uh, "Can I live with trading ten thousand huh. dollars?" What yeah. we say, you can live. We need an underpass. <laughs> 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 the things that people remember I say yes you can trade for a, you can trade for a living with 10 grand if your address is under a freeway underpass so, <laughs> all right very true yeah uh, great to end it on with a laugh brother take it easy yeah, Ned. and thank you thank you Dale once more and uh, see you soon okay bro thank Cheers, you Ned. my brother brother adios adios so everyone that's a wrap for me I hope everyone enjoyed Nanette. Uh, I think he's uh, top shelf. It's great to talk to my friends and contemporaries. I'm in uh, outside of San Diego, LaShawn, in a town called Temecula. It's wine country in 
Southern California. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, you did? Yeah, I'm right near Old Town, LaShawn. You're very welcome, Arif. I want to thank my team as well. I want to thank Steve Volge and Stelios for another great, another great uh, session. And uh, I'll see everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. You're very welcome, Hardianto. Adios, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your spring weather. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And, you know, money comes and goes. Time is gone forever. Make it count. Thanks for sharing some of your time with us today. Adios, everyone.